My name is Desdemona. I am a hip hop artist, teacher, writer. It's strange to me when people say, oh, you always talk about being a woman. And I'm like, male rappers always talk about being men, but no one ever even questions it because it's the norm. It seems like it's still strange enough that people kind of go, mm, why are you talking about being a woman? And I'm like, what else would I talk about, <laughs> you know? In this world that's very patriarchal, male dominated, we need to keep pushing through and be like, we're here too. Put your hands together for Desdemona. I've been all these things. I've been the muse. I've been the naive lady singing the blues. I've been talked about, yeah, misconstrued. I've been loved and hated by a lot of you, but I don't ever stop. I was born and raised in Mount Pleasant, Iowa, and I moved to the Twin Cities in 1995. School was a little difficult for me, like first through fourth and fifth grade. I was really behind in reading and math, and I think it really affected my confidence. And so art helped me realize that not everybody could do what I could do either. I'm really grateful to have art in my life in that way because I just think without it, I don't know, I don't know who I would be. When I was like a young teenager, we finally got MTV. And then Yo MTV Raps was where I got like all of my inspirations. Like I wrote poetry when I was a kid, but I never thought about like performing it or presenting it on stage. Teachers in the place and the tykes are all hyper top the squabble about who's the master of the mic. She picks a vicar and says it's her and she rips it while they bite. Children rumble as she mumbles something into the mic. She I was a freshman, 14 or 15, and I heard this mixtape and it had the Beastie Boys, Run DMC, and JJ Fad on it. And I was like, what? Like, it was just like, I just got, it, it inspired me a lot. And so I wrote my first song, which Really, I probably jacked a lot of lyrics from, from all those groups at the time. But it wasn't until I was like in my 20s in college when I decided, oh, this is what I want to do. I think that female MCs bring a balance to the world that doesn't exist if women don't have a voice. In 2005, Be Girl Be was born and was a festival celebrating women's contribution to hip hop culture. And it was the first of its kind in, in the world from what I know. We did it for five years. We created this really great space where we could kind of nurture ourselves and each other. When I realized we were done, I was like, okay, we're done. And I'm like, what do we do next? You know, whether we do it together or we do it separately, what do we do? And so there was an excitement about that to me. It continues on in so many different ways in my life, in the work that I do as an individual. Whoever has the bag starts off and you say a word that you know has a lot of rhymes to it, and you pass the bag to someone. So if I say bite and I throw it. We're at Intermedia Arts for the Hip Hop Institute. I'm one of the co-leaders of that, and I lead the lyricism side of things. A rhyme is when the end of the word sounds the same. Assonance is when the vowel sound in the word sounds the same. So what the kids get exposed to all of the base elements of hip hop, DJing, break dancing, beatboxing, production, visual art, and obviously then the emceeing side. I get so much out of teaching. It feeds me creatively. I used to be really drained by it and, and really critical of myself when I would make a mistake or things didn't go the way that they should. And now I just see it as a challenge. And it's like, if it didn't go the way that I wanted it to go, I'm like, oh, well tomorrow, we're, <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. One step forward, two steps back. One foot in the present, two feet in the past. So what does that mean? Um, really, it talks about, you know, I'm taking baby steps to getting to where I wanna be. Where do you wanna be? And I never see myself as just, I'm the leader and you're, you follow me. 
I always see myself as a student when I walk in the door because I know that they know things I don't know and I know they can teach me things. Our first category that we're gonna actually work with is nursery rhymes. And so I want to hear from everybody like some ideas or some of the nursery rhymes that you know of from your childhood, yep. Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty, good one. I walk the kids through a process of brainstorming ideas around what nursery rhymes they know, what playground games and songs they're familiar with, and then we think of things that are um, problems and issues in the community. Women not having the same equal rights as men. And it's usually a way to get young writers and beginning writers to not be afraid to get something on the page. I would love for you to read if you want to. You can read your whole piece or part of it. Mine, I made it about bullying. So. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, shine no more for who you are. Long ago, you shone so brightly, you never thought to fight so slightly. For that the exercise I'm doing is related to my new album, No Man's Land, where I have a series of nursery rhymes that I wrote for modern times that are not recorded on the album, but are on an insert. I worked with an illustrator, Angel Hawari, who does amazing work. I, I'd give her the nursery rhymes and she would do illustrations for them. So there's a series of six nursery rhymes and they fold out to a big poster. And I think when you collaborate, it always pushes you a little bit outside of your, your comfort zone. So collaborating on No Man's Land, I wanted to showcase female voices. The role of the MC is to inform people or to get people thinking or asking questions. So there's like a leadership quality about being an MC, but I also think to be a good leader, you have to be able to back away and create that space for other people too. No sense of self, so she's still from someone else. No sense of self, so she's still from someone else.